Hey there, mama friend, and welcome to the 5-Minute Mom Podcast, where we'll talk about real life, real faith, real fast. To learn more about all of our co-hosts or to sign up for a free monthly resource email, be sure to check out all the links in the podcast show notes. Simi, it is so exciting to have you on the podcast for a longer interview. Um, you are just uh, full of joy, full of life, full of wisdom. Um, I love having you uh, as a part of our team. It has brought just such a freshness and a life to us. And so thank you so much for pouring into us. But I can't wait to get to know you more today and for the listeners to get to know you. So before we dive in, tell us a little bit about Simi, about your family and just help us get to know you a little more. Oh my goodness. So this is such an honor for me. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an incredible honor that you asked me to be part of this podcast. It was a blessing to me before um, I even joined as a co-host. So I am grateful Mm -hmm. to you, your voice. You're such an encouragement, um, everything in every way, not just the words you speak, but the way you love. Um, Mm -hmm. So thank Thank you for that. Um, so my name is Simi. I was born in India and um, in Kerala, India, it's a southern state. And I moved to Dallas when I was about seven years old. And now I live in Oklahoma because my husband's a pastor. Um, and so he pastors a church in Norman, Oklahoma, where OU is. That's <laughs> what everybody knows Oklahoma yeah. for, OU. Um, and so we have two kids. I have a nine-year-old daughter and a six-year-old son. And I am a speaker and I wrote a devotional about, well, in 2020. How can we yeah. bring it? Point, right? <laughs> I know. It all runs together though, somehow. <laughs> after 2020. I'm like, what happened? When, yeah. when <laughs> I know. I was just telling a friend, I'm like, is it 2022 still? I'm so confused. <laughs> right? like, how many years have we married? It's like that didn't happen. Like 2020, nothing happened. So it kind of messes with your mind. You really have to think about it's it. So everything. true. It's so true. Yeah. That's amazing. And uh, I just love, I love you are also a full time working mom. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So I work in healthcare. I'm a physical therapist. Um, and so it has been interesting being a healthcare worker during Mm -hmm. COVID Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, ministry is also hard in 2020, being a pastor's wife and going through all the things with church and, you know, living in isolation and not having your church family Mm -hmm. to worship with uh, and watching my husband make all those hard choices Yes, (laughs) and then going to work and having to wear a mask and losing that connection Mm -hmm. with, you know, people and getting sick and all of that stuff. So God has really carried us. It has definitely been one of the hardest, most challenging seasons of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Two really hard vocations in a pandemic, you know, and I, I told everyone as far as the pastoral side, we were always like, there's no playbook. There's no like, here's what we did in the last pandemic. And you couldn't, you couldn't really call like your older pastor friends and be like, what'd you do in the last pandemic? Like everyone was just having to make such quick decisions and hard, emotionally charged decisions. And then of course the healthcare side is just, I can't even imagine. And so what did you guys learn in that season? What, when you look back, like what was the big takeaway from that? Oh my goodness. I think really trusting in God. Um, one was you have to take care of your mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I'm one of those, I'm like a big people pleaser. I'm trying to get better at that. <laughs> <laughs> and so like for me, I could never say no to anybody. Like mm-hmm. I always to please everybody and make everybody happy. And I think especially when you are a ministry leader, you feel like, you know, you have to make everybody happy. And what we realized was you can't. You know, Definitely you can't. not in 2020. <laughs> there were so many different things going yeah. on, not just the pandemic. There's just so much division and social mm-hmm. media and all that stuff where everybody was vomiting all of their opinions. And, you know, you get calls about everyone's opinion and what we yeah. should do, what 
we shouldn't do and what we did wrong and what we could have done better. Um, and so there was that. And then just being in healthcare, kind of the same thing. I was just like, you know what, I got to choose what's best for my family. And I have to, I felt like all of those things were taken away from us in a way where we had no choice, you know? And so that kind of made it really difficult. And I just had to trust that God was going to protect my kids and God was going to protect me when I went to work and God was going to take care of us and that he's in control. And I think, you know, one of the things that is kind of morbid, but I I hate starting to talk about death in a podcast. (laughs) I think I, because so many people lost their lives and being in Mm -hmm. healthcare, watching so many people die and hearing about death so much you think about death more you Mm -hmm. think about your own mortality and I would say you know I'm in my 30s and I'm right now I can say I was talking to my husband about it the other day I'm like I I, I think I'm okay with death like Mm. now I'm I'm at peace like I I want to see Jesus and I don't feel like there's any not that you know I don't want to live for my like the the things that God wants me to do but I feel like there's this peace that we have like where we feel like this longing yeah you know so many people die and you're just like man like uh, you've seen when you go to funerals and you're like you see families and like man, there's peace and there's joy, even though there's grief, you're, they're mm-hmm. holding both. Then you realize that you have that because of Jesus. Yeah. You know? so the, true. This, this life is just temporary. You realize that, Hey, like it's not my health or my mm-hmm. success or my money or any of that. That's going to make my la- life happy. This yeah. is just a brief moment of my life. My life isn't over when I die, I get eternity mm-hmm. with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, I think there's also, there's this, overwhelming um peace yeah. about that. yeah that's a great way to put it i have felt that the last you know last several years um as the world gets darker and my husband, who's a pastor is like, this is what Jesus told us was going to happen. And ah. you know, he's like, we need to stop being shocked. And I'm like, you know, it is easy to be like, oh man, we're spiraling. <laughs> but you know, he's like, this is what God told us was coming and we're to be a light in it. And, um, that it does definitely, I think in the heart of a believer, it's like that longing for Jesus is just stronger every day. Like this is not my home. Yeah. And, I, um, and so I love, that is a really powerful lesson and you just kind of threw this out there but you are from India <laughs> and so I want to know a little bit about your story how you met Jesus when you met Jesus um, and how that impacted you well okay so whenever I explain to people that I'm from India I always say southern India for Kerala because Thomas the apostle mm. Jesus disciple doubting Thomas actually came to India and that's the state that he came to. Wow. And so at that time he would go and share the gospel message and a few people would convert and he would like join with them and say, hey, okay, let's build a church here. You guys continue the work. I'm going to go to another town. And so my dad's great, 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 great grandfather came to faith through the ministry of Thomas and wow. helped build that church. And so my family through that generational, you know, transformation mm-hmm. has been in faith. Um, and so India is still predominantly a Hindu nation, mm-hmm. um, but there's a lot of Christianity in Kerala. And so we we were Christians before, but I always say we were like Orthodox. We were traditional mm-hmm religious Christians. We weren't really um, believers or really having a relationship with Jesus um, until I I was 13 years old. So my dad, um, after I moved to America, is like the first time my dad lived with us because my dad lived in the Middle East. He was a chef. And so he worked there and he would just come visit us in India. So my mom, my brother, and I lived in India. Mm -hmm. And so once we moved to Dallas, we all lived together and we quickly realized that my dad had a problem with addiction. So my Mm -hmm. dad was an alcoholic. He was surrounded by alcohol Mm -hmm. working at a five-star hotel in downtown Dallas. And so he would come home super late 
and my mom would be angry. We didn't have cell phones, you know, at that time. And so she would be worried staying up till 2 a.m. And he would walk in stumbling in drunk and he would be set off by something she would say. And he would be very abusive physically Mm -hmm. towards her. And I was around eight. And so I would be the one to stop my dad and pull him off of my mom. And and that kind of was my life. And I just thought, hey, this is probably normal, right? Everyone's family is probably like this because what you know as a child is what is normal to you, yeah, right? Yeah. You don't know any different. Um, and I remember my grandfather who was going to a Bible believing church, he invited us to like a small group meeting um, at someone's house. And so we went and I remember sitting in that room and they were all singing songs um, and I didn't know the song they were singing, but there was something in that room that I felt as I looked around at their faces, I just mm. saw joy and I saw hope. And I felt something in me say, you need that. Mm. That's what you need. Um, and without anyone really sharing the gospel or anything like that, because I was just a kid, you know, yeah. I was going with my mom. Um, I, I gave my heart to Jesus and I said, I don't know what you have, mm-hmm. but I need that. Um, and I remember that was just the first glimpse of hope and mm. joy that I had. And as a kid, that gave me this longing for there's something better. There's something better than the life I have right now. Um, mm. And so I, I didn't even know how to pray for that because I was just a kid and no one showed me. And so my mom gave her heart to Jesus that day, too. And my dad um we couldn't tell him because we knew that he would be very angry with us. Mm. And so um, later, a couple of years later, my uh, dad started his own restaurant and his restaurant started failing because he was having financial issues. He started drinking more mm. um, and the problems just became worse, you know, and we were just like, well, nothing's getting better. I, I, we thought there was hope, but there's no hope. It just mm. got worse. And my grandfather invited us to go to his church to see a baptism. And we had never seen an adult baptism. And Mm -hmm. so my dad was like, okay, you can go, whatever. And he had a restaurant, Sundays are busy. So he was like, just go. And so my brother and I went. And that Sunday morning after the baptism, during the worship service, I noticed my brother started crying. Mm -hmm. And the pastor walked up to him and said, are you okay? You know, we're like guests at this church. And so <laughs> the pastor's like, did someone say something? What set this kid off, you know? Mm. And so he goes up to him. He's like, are you okay? Are you okay? And my brother just kept saying the words, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Wow. <laughs> um, again, without anyone sharing the gospel or anything, mm. just the Holy Spirit moving in his heart, mm. he gave his heart to Jesus. And we went home and we just knew that God had a purpose for our family. Yeah. And soon after that, through just lots of prayer, my dad eventually gave his heart to Jesus and found God and just wow. everything changed I mean, for our life. And my dad became a missionary. He traveled the world <laughs> with the gospel message. My brother went to Bible school. He's a pastor at a local church here and I married a pastor. So I always say, you know, the, the, love for the church that my great, 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 great grandfather had now was restored back through my dad and through us, through the power of the Holy spirit, the gospel message. And so I I would say I was born into a Christian family, but I didn't know Jesus till I was about 13. Wow. Uh, That's amazing. And such a powerful legacy, but I love, you know, we, we never get to inherit our the faith from our mom and dad or grandparents. It's Jesus is so personal. And I love hearing stories of how he meets us right where we are. And um, that's beautiful. And I love whenever you show up to minister, you are so passionate about people understanding their worth and their identity in Jesus. And I get that loud and clear every time I hear you speak or show up on social media. And so tell me, um, you know, there's a lot of layers there, obviously, like you mentioned your family dynamic, but being an immigrant at a really volatile age, like when you said eight, my oldest daughter's eight and she had to switch elementary schools. And that was drama on top of drama. So countries, 
<laughs> I can't even imagine. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. And so a really hard age. I mean, a very hard age. Um, and so tell me how did that impact you and kind of your search for identity and, and what has God taught you? Yeah. So I think, you know, it's one of those things that I feel like I always kind of tucked away that I never thought about that. Um, until I wrote my devotional and I really dug into my own hurts and where all of those thoughts came from, I never really dealt with those things. Cause mm-hmm. you know, when something hurts so much as a kid, you just kind of hide yeah. it. Um, and so I, I, I will say like, I don't remember it when I was a kid thinking I hate my life for telling my parents about it because being Indian, you don't talk about your feelings. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and growing up in India, like you going to America was like a miracle, right? Like, Mm -hmm. like everybody that I knew wanted to go to America. Mm -hmm. So I knew that this was such an amazing opportunity for my family. And we finally got to be a family together. And my mom's side of the family, everybody had been here. So I didn't even know my uncles and my aunts and my grandparents on that side well enough. I didn't have a relationship with them. So I was super excited but I didn't realize that that meant I would not ever see those friends again that I had for the past eight years. And so I, um, whenever I first moved, it was just really hard because I didn't know the language. Well, Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, friendships were hard and more than anything else, I think what always was a struggle for me is finding who I was, Mm -hmm. right? Like am I Indian or am I American? Mm -hmm. Um, And always feeling like, I wanted to be, I had to be one, right? I always had to choose one. And so throughout my life, it was, that was the biggest identity struggle I had because at home, at the church I grew up, I was completely Indian and I love everything Indian. I love Indian clothes. I love Indian food. The spicier, the better. Like I love everything. (laughs) I speak Malayalam like fluently. I I love Malayalam songs Mm. and movies. So I am completely Indian, but when, as soon as I leave the house and I go to school and I go to work and I do mm-hmm. all of that stuff, I am American as American can be, right? Like, <laughs> I know more, about, more about America than I do India because I grew up here. Yeah. Um, but it was always like when, even though I felt so American, when people looked at me, they saw me as somebody else, like, hey, where are you from? Or what right. are you? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what? You know, so for me, it was always like, what? What do they mean? Like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Indian. I'm brown. And so for when I go to India, it's always like they can tell by my accent that I'm not Indian. Right. Mm-hmm. By my actions and my demeanor and just the way my body language, they can tell that I'm not from there. And so yeah. this constant feeling of not belonging anywhere. And so I think that's the reason I was so passionate, because I realized in my 30s, it took me a long time, um, (laughs) that, you know what, God made me Indian, and he placed me in America. And all of that is by design. And I am his daughter. Mm -hmm. That's my identity, you Mm -hmm. know, and I can use all of those parts Mm -hmm. to glorify him. Yeah. When I show up as fully Indian, American, Christian (laughs) woman, gosh, I get to be myself and I get to bring God glory. So why not? I love it. And you do it so well and beautifully. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, it's wonderful. And, and for those, I know we mentioned your devotional, it's called, I am not break free from stereotypes and become the woman God made you to be. And so, um, you know, that's even more than, you know, I think our ethnicity, our background, but you kind of tackle some other stereotypes. What are a few of the others that you mentioned in your devotional? Yeah. So I talked about the things I always say, I, I wrote about eight because I struggle with all eight. And I think it's mm-hmm. the most common ones that I feel culture says women are this, right? Women mm-hmm. are always in comparison with, with each other. Women are clicky. Mm-hmm. Women are manipulative. Uh, women are gossip. So I talk mm-hmm. about eight of those really common ones that honestly keep us away from wanting female friendships. Right. And if we watch any TV show, if we watch any movie, women are depicted in this way. Mm-hmm. And because they're so subtle in our world and in our culture, we think that's normal. We expect Mm -hmm. women to gossip. We expect women to be clicky and we don't feel like we have to live any sort of different way Mm -hmm. because 
Of course, women, all, all women do that. Mm-hmm. But I think God calls us to a higher standard. And I don't think that's the way God intended or designed us to be when we search scripture. So we live to that. We live to the original design of what God calls us to be and we follow in his ways, right? And so we live differently so we can change that narrative. So when I choose not to gossip, my daughter is going to be like, well, all women are gossips because I've never heard my mom gossip. Mm, That's powerful. Yeah. That was the purpose behind the book. That's amazing. I'm going to put a link in the show notes so everybody can find it. I think it's a really powerful and much needed devotional. And um, you just have a beautiful way with words and a passion for God's word. So it is so powerful. Um, But I want to transition a little bit. I want to know, uh, so we met through Called Creatives online. And um, I want to know, so as I started praying, uh, we'd never met in person. And I was like, Lord, who do you want? And your name just, it was like this, this girl, (laughs) I'm like, I don't know her at all. We've never had a conversation, God. And I think it's so fun to look back on like God bringing our co-hosts together. But I'm so, I just slid into your DMs real weird and was like, Hey, (laughs) I'm praying and you don't know me, but you're supposed to podcast with me. (laughs) So I want to know why you said yes. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So this is like such a funny story. So I remember earlier this year, God just put in my heart that I was supposed to minister with someone in some sort of way. And I remember going to like so many different things and I would be like, is it her? God, is it her? Is it her? Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know, but I just knew that there was something got placed in my heart and all he's, and that's how God works, right? He gives us like little glimpses of like things that he wants us to do. And he doesn't show us the full picture. And I kept searching. I was like, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, And I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. I didn't know if it was going to be lives. I didn't know it was going to be podcasts. I didn't know what it was. But I knew there was something that I was supposed to do to minister with somebody else, another woman that I was supposed to partner with. And when you messaged me, it was an automatic, immediate yes. Because I was just like, there you go. God is amazing. (laughs) I mean, like that could only be God, guys. You can't make this stuff up. (laughs) And it is funny because when uh, he started saying like, think, well, I was really burnt out and God was like, you're supposed to keep going, but I need you to think bigger. And I'm like, bigger. I'm so tired. (laughs) Like, how can I think bigger? And he was like, no kingdom bigger, like invite people in. And, um, I was like, okay, great. These five girls are really good friends with them. And, you know, I'll just, we'll just do it together. And he's like, no, I want you to pray. I have people in mind and uh, it's just so cool. He goes so far ahead of us. And like when that little spark of an idea came in my head, it was months before that, that he was talking to the co-hosts and it's so sweet. And it's just a reminder that he loves me and you and the listeners so much. Um, It's been amazing. Everyone has such a different personality and a season of life. And it's been really beautiful to see all of that come together um, for some bigger kingdom thinking. (laughs) So I love that. And that says a lot about you because I think it's just not, not just that you trust God, but that you realize like this podcast is bigger than you, right? Like Mm -hmm. you're just like, God started this. This is not my thing. Right. (laughs) pull other women and Mm -hmm. and make a seat for them at your table because you worked so hard you invested and you started this and this is your vision and now you're like saying okay god if you're saying i'm going to bring these people in then i'm going to bring them in and so that says so much about your trust in god uh and i hope that inspires your listeners to also do the same you know, because I think as women, that's one of the things, you know, like that woman being clicky, I think we miss out on so mm-hmm. much as we make it about ourselves or the familiar circles that we're in. And God's like, no, 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 I have something so much more for you. I have so much more I want to do through you, but you have to be willing to get uncomfortable and trust me mm-hmm. and room for others that you might not know that may be different than you. And yeah. when you do that, God is going to multiply your vision 
Yeah, it's so good. And yeah, and I mean, just back to that. Thank you for that beautiful compliment. I think from the very beginning, it's like, whoa, God, I'm so dependent. <laughs> so there's never any I started it because from the <laughs> very beginning, I'm like, really? What are we doing here? Uh, and so, yeah, and it, I have some really, I, you know, I, I wish I would have taken more behind the scenes pictures and things because when I started my daughter, my youngest, my middle daughter was so little, like three weeks, four weeks old. And oh my goodness. My Thing wasn't really even like a, you know, like a thing. Uh, and uh, that was like 20, I think it was, it was a thing, but it was like 2016 and it wasn't, you know, everybody wasn't podcasting and, and it is so funny looking back at his faithfulness and I don't feel any ownership because I'm like, you started this, you did this and whatever he wants it to be is a joy for me. And so it's been, it's been so much fun to collaborate and so much fun to hear different perspectives and seasons of life. Like Renee has grown children and Lauren has a mix of both. And, you know, Bailey has little bitty ones and you have, we, you and I have kids about the same age, but you're working full time. And it's, it's just been a beautiful mix where it's encouraged me. That's been the greatest gift is just what I'm getting from all of you. And so um, it's been wonderful. Um, I want to know, so I asked this to Lauren, it was just so much fun to hear. What is God teaching you in this season of motherhood? And what is your favorite like piece of wisdom to give a moms a little bit younger than you? Mm. So we're recording this in like the Christmas season. Yeah. So I've been uh, thinking a lot about Mary and I was just, you know, I love the book of Luke. And mm -hmm. so I was reading through Luke chapter one, where it talks about the birth of Jesus. And, you know, I love that the angel comes to Mary and it's not like the, his immediate statement to her is not, okay, Mary, God has a message. You're going to have his son and mm -hmm. da, 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 right. He says that, but the first thing he says to her is Mary, you are highly favored. Mm -hmm. You are blessed. God is with you. And then he says, you're going to have a son. His name is going to be Jesus and he's going to do these amazing things. Right. And we see the same thing in the very next thing that happens where she goes to Elizabeth and Elizabeth says to her, Mary, you are blessed. You are favored, you know? And I think what God is teaching me in this season is reminding myself and reminding others of our purpose and our identity is what helps us to live out our God-given mm. purpose. Yeah. Uh, because I think so often we are so busy with the mundane everyday tasks that we have to do as moms, as mm -hmm. working moms, as stay-at-home moms. And we get caught up in all of those activities and, and the to-do list that we forget that we have purpose. Yeah that our kids yes. have purpose. And mm -hmm. as long as we don't see that we have purpose, we're never going to speak purpose into our kids. Yeah, right. That's so good. And so he didn't just say Jesus had purpose. He said, Mary, you have purpose. Yeah. You are chosen. Mm -hmm. You are highly favored. You are blessed. Mm -hmm. And for her, she needed to hear those words first. Right. Yeah. And I think she needed Elizabeth to also say again to her into the depths of her heart to impress that on her spirit. Mary, you are blessed. Mm -hmm. You are chosen for this because she's about to go through hard seasons. Yeah. Where us, when we look back on the life of Jesus, we're like, yeah, she's so blessed, man. She got to hold Jesus, <laughs> son of God. Right. But for everybody else, like, Mary just had a baby out of wedlock. Like Mary's yeah. walking around with like pregnant and she doesn't have Joseph. And mm -hmm. Joseph is just like, I'm not sure, you know, <laughs> pooping and burping and do like all the other human babies. I don't know about, the yeah. house, you know? And so I think for Mary had to, she had to live a life where society and culture didn't understand her. And she still had to believe in her heart. I have great purpose. Mm -hmm. I have great purpose. I'm a woman of purpose. And this kid has great purpose. Mm -hmm. And I have to remind myself, yes, this is hard work, but it is holy work. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to be women who will look each other in the face and say, Hey, you are chosen. You are highly favored. You are blessed and remind each other mm -hmm. of our purpose. And then that's what I love about this podcast because we get to do that. That's what I love about our text group where we get to yeah. do that for each other in those hard moments where we're like, I don't know. We <laughs> need women to 
do mm-hmm. that for us, right? Because mm-hmm. if we don't realize that we have great purpose, we're just going to live our life aimlessly. And we're going to miss out on God, God, what God is doing in our world. And yeah. we're just going to do all these things for our kids, but we're not going to see that they have great purpose. The mm-hmm. reason Mary and Joseph were able to do all of that is because they were like, hey, we have a great purpose and that is to raise this kid because this kid has great purpose. Mm-hmm. And when I look at my kids and I just, I'm driving them to all of these activities, that's not purpose, right? But when I see, man, my daughter is going to impact someone's life. My Mm -hmm. son is going to be a father one day. I'm going to raise them differently. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to them differently. I'm going to pray for them harder. Yeah. So I think we need to be women that really remind each other that we are women on purpose so that we can go to our kids and speak purpose over them. Mm, it's so good. And, you know, like you were saying back to identity, um, the enemy, he can't create anything new. He can't, he can't do anything but counterfeit and copy and warp. And he wins if he, you know, lies to us about who we are. And it's so, I know it's so hard um, to forget, but I think he wants to numb that and he wants to warp that and um, where we find our value, where we find our worth. And, um, you know, I, I hear so many moms saying like, uh, you know, um, it's so hard to raise kids in this time, but I'm like, our kids were made for this time. We were made for this time. Yes. And um, I just want to and bold and empower moms. Like I'll never forget growing up our pastor. He was like, you know, in the last days, the enemy's going to put in his best players. It's like the fourth quarter, but God will put in his best players. And I'm like, what a hard um, calling to, to think about, but also what an honor that he saw fit um, to put us in this time and our kids in this time. And, um, I just think that's amazing. And what about, what's your, what's your encouragement for new moms? Like maybe a mom a little bit younger than you and you're like, Hey, this is my, my nugget of wisdom for you. Gosh, I would say that you have to trust your motherly instinct. And I didn't Mm. know that was like a real thing until Mm. like I had my kids. Right. Cause like everyone has opinions and there are so many books that tell you things and it's really hard because you question everything because you want to be the perfect mom for this kid. And you just have to know you're going to mess up. You're going to get tired. You're going to do things wrong and you're going to get angry and frustrated. Um, and that's all normal. (laughs) And you're tired and you're not sleeping unless you're Audrey, you're not starting a podcast with a- <laughs> no, it's not glamorous <laughs> don't worry and so it is normal so yeah. god will give you through the holy spirit like just these moments of like hey this is what my daughter my daughter needs this is what my son needs right now listen to that right yeah. if you feel like that that you have to like you know listen to other people and it's weighing on you then you're just going to like drown in anxiety, right? So for me, it was like everybody else's opinion of like, oh, it's a baby hunger. I'm not doing everything right. I'm not (laughs) doing it like the book. And I want to do everything. But then I realized like, hey, there is this thing that tells me this is what my kid is crying about right now. I'm going to trust that. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm going to lead, I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead me even in this work. Because like you said, like, God made them for this time and God made me their mom. Right. And so he is going to give me the wisdom I need because he has prepared me in advance for the work he has for me to do. Mm -hmm. And so I have to trust that I have all the gifts I need to take care of this child, to steward this child well. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it feels like those motherly instincts that come up. Yeah. If you feel something, you know, act on it. Mm-hmm. And I, my favorite, I always pray like uh, James one, five, like mm-hmm. if anyone likes wisdom, let him ask God and yeah. he'll give it generously. And how many times, like I've struggled with a parenting decision and stopped and said, God, you promised wisdom. Like I need wisdom on this thing. Oh, yeah. And how many, the way that he will answer that so clearly that yeah. I know it's him. And I don't have to second guess is this me wanting this or is this my mom's advice or my friend's advice it's like no this is god brought this at the perfect time and the perfect way for me to know this Mm -hmm. is his wisdom and you're so like our kids 
are my kids' personalities are so different than my friends' kids' personality, and even from each other, they're mm-hmm. <laughs> they're all so different. And so, over each kid, praying wisdom. You know, there's no formula, even for your own kids. Um, and so that has been so much fun for me in a way to be like. You prom. This is a promise, yes. And you are going to show up, mm-hmm. and I don't have to have all the answers. And um, you know what? One mom who wrote that book that swears it's the answer. It might have worked with her kids, but yes, doesn't exactly. mean it'll work with yours. Exactly. So, uh, it is. It's really good to lean in on that. And um, I love that advice. Well, we're gonna go into a quick lightning round. I've had Uh-oh. so much fun doing these. <laughs> Because I didn't prepare you or myself for them. So it makes it really fun. fun. Uh, yes. Okay. So what are you reading? Oh, right now I was reading the Advent book. It's like Shepherd on the Search with my kids. So I've been reading. Oh, I love that. It's like a small little, but it's really good. It's on Day Spring. And so they have like devotional book that I bought for my older daughter. So we're mm-hmm. reading together. I love that. There's so many good Advent uh, resources right now. That yeah. It's it's hard to pick because I'm like, those all look so good. <laughs> and my favorite actually for like the Christmas story, like every Christmas Eve service, we always read the Jesus Storybook Bible. Yes. Oh my gosh. So good. Yeah. Yes. So good. I love that. Yeah. We've, we've tried to do Advent with our kids every year. We've done, we've, we've really uh, made it too big some years and uh, we found a good balance now it is really fun and they look forward to it so okay what are you eating you always have really good recipes what is like your favorite thing to eat right now well because it's cold I like anything chili yeah Um, I love chili but um my right now I'm eating Penang which is a a Thai restaurant that we have here and I love their fried rice I like spicy and I like rice and so Mm -hmm. that's what <laughs> oh, I love that too. Okay, so did you learn to cook from your dad? Do you are you like a really good cook? I love to cook. I'm not good at baking. My parents are teaching me their their okay. recipes. The only problem with like Indian parents is like they never measure anything, so they're like a little <laughs> yes. bit, a little bit of that. That's and Texas like, parents though too. <laughs> let me tell you, <laughs> my mom's like a dash and a pinch and a clump, and I'm like, what, <laughs> mom? Like, don't get it. I don't get no, it. No, I know that is exactly my mom's recipe. Just like a plop. I think plop was on a recipe once. Plop. <laughs> yeah, it is like an art. I think what's fun about it is you have to like get with your parents and be like show me that again (laughs) so it's hard you can't just you follow a paper so that is really fun yeah I I love I've grown in my cooking baking I'm gluten-free so it'll never be a thing I'm I'm convinced (laughs) (laughs) it's too hard gluten-free baking no um awesome what are you drinking that you're loving always coffee coffee, coffee. yeah coffee. coffee bailey yeah. is our only tea drinker on the co the co i do tea. like tea too but i like indian tea like i like chai because oh it's yeah like all the spices so like w- whenever it's like this season when it's like colder and mm-hmm. stuff i do like a lot of chai because it has all the earthy like yes Oh, I love that. Yeah. All that stuff and ginger and which is good for you. So I like that too. Yeah. I think I've actually migrated from like pumpkin spice more to the chai tea. Yeah. I feel like I crave it now that I'm older than the yes. pumpkin. Yeah. I love chai tea. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay. What's saving your life right now? Uh, I, I know this is a cliche answer, but I would definitely say the Bible. I am, like I mentioned earlier, just being in healthcare, it's just been super, super hard and challenging. And so I'm definitely leaning into God's word more, mm-hmm. um, because I just need, you know, his word to mm-hmm. permeate into my soul to remind me who he is, that he's good. You yeah. know, when I remember that he is good, that it doesn't matter what happens because mm-hmm. I'm like, going to be okay because God is good. And so I'm really leaning in on just scripture right now. I love that. I'm trying to, Oh, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to, because like I said, I'm a pastor's wife the week after Christmas because yes. my husband's off. Yes. <laughs> we just talked about this. We both are pastor's wife and we get the week off after yes. Christmas. So I take a week off work too. And so we just kind of hang out with the family and just kind of like chill, travel a little bit. And that's always just like a good time because 
you know, that season of busyness, like we are aimlessly running and doing all this stuff. We're not really intentionally together and present Mm -hmm. as a family. And so I really enjoy like talking to my kids and my husband and not being in a hurry and looking to the next thing that we have to do. Right. And I don't know about you guys, but like our whole staff is off and every, you know, the rest of the body is like taking their vacation. So it really is the only time of year where I truly feel like the phone can go off or, you know, there's no like staff emergency or anything like that. And we do a lot of our, our praying, our dreaming and our planning for the, mm-hmm. the new year in that week. And I notice when we're very intentional with that week, it just really spills over into the new year. And I, I love it. So yes. yeah, I feel your excitement for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to be awesome. Well, Simi, do you mind closing out our time, just praying for these moms and lifting them up? Yeah, absolutely. God, we just thank you so much for every single woman that is listening. Um, Just thank you so much for their lives. We just thank you that you have a great purpose for them. We just thank you so much, God, that you are all over their story, wherever they are in their story, whether they're in the middle of the story in the heart or looking back today at all all the things that you have brought them to through. I thank you, God, that you are faithful and you are good. And so I pray, God, that you would bless them and keep them and cause your face to shine upon them and that you would help them to know that you are for them and you are Emmanuel. You are God with us, holding our hand and leading us in the good, the bad, the hard. You are near. You are close. You are with us in Jesus' name. Thank you.